Well, welcome to OmniFocus Workflows with Coulter Reed, and really excited to to have Coulter uh, here here live uh, in person today. And uh, we're going to be hearing about his system and setup. And before we get to that, just want to do a little bit of an intro first. Uh, if, if this is your first experience with Learn OmniFocus, uh, you're you're very welcome, and I uh, hope you you find this valuable. Um, we've got uh, some live audience here today from various parts of the world, and I'm sure many of you will be watching a recording of this as well, so you're very welcome either way. Um, so I'm based in uh, Vancouver, Canada, so on the west coast of Canada, and very conveniently I'm just down the road from the, the Omni Group. Uh, they're about a two and a half, three hour drive from Vancouver, and I've been down to visit their office a few times, and I've kind of made it a personal mission to take some of the, the feedback that I've heard from um, OmniFocus, uh, Learn OmniFocus members and then make sure I deliver especially the, the ones that I hear most often and help to, uh, help to guide their development and uh, we'll be seeing some of those new features as, as things move forward. So really happy to have a relationship with them. Uh, they're just a great, great group of people. And I was just uh, checking the other day to see how many people have joined Learn OmniFocus uh, since since the site uh, first launched in 2014, and I was uh, quite amazed to see it's been up to 76 countries now. Um, so literally uh, all over the world, every continent except Antarctica is, is represented in our community. And uh, just really nice to have some people live today, and uh, I've had contact with uh, definitely not everybody yet, but I hope to uh, hope to have some contact with you at some point, whether it's through a live session or or at least through uh, through email correspondence. Um, so what we're on now is what's called Learn OmniFocus Live. So this is one component of Learn OmniFocus. And there's lots of videos and articles uh, you can can uh, watch and read at your own pace. But I really wanted to bring a community feel to, to Learn OmniFocus. And that's why we do these, these live sessions. Um, so there's a few different types of uh, sessions. Uh, one is the theme session. Um, and I'll be talking about the one that's coming up uh, next, which is... Uh, one I'm really exciting to, excited to deliver in April. And then we also have ones that are centered around a workflow guest. So Coulter is that, that guest today, where we can see uh, different different styles of using OmniFocus, different workflows and so forth. And I have, one thing I found is no two OmniFocus setups and workflows look exactly the same. So it's not necessarily doing exactly what I do or what Coulter does. It's really about taking some inspiration from this, maybe using it as a starting point if it's one you really resonate with and then really make it your own and adapt it so it uh, really reflects you in your life. Um, we also regularly do office hour sessions and these are small group sessions. There's a maximum of 10 people and everyone's on video and you can share your, your OmniFocus setup. You can get some advice from me in the group. Um, we can walk through some some features if there's something that's not, not uh, clear. And these specifically aren't recorded and everyone's asked to keep things confidential. So these are, these are ones that are designed to be attended in person. And then uh, for many years, I've been doing uh, private coaching and consulting. So if you want some one-on-one -on -one time, uh, if you want uh, just to delve into your system and workflows and OmniFocus and complementary apps, um, uh, there's some more information on the website. So to give a few specifics on what's coming soon, uh, the next live session I'm going to be uh, leading is Managing Someday Maybe Lists with OmniFocus. And this is often a source of... Uh, some confusion. Um, sometimes people aren't quite sure what to do with things that land in their inbox. So we're going to look at various strategies for for doing this, where to keep this information, the pros and cons of keeping it in OmniFocus, uh, how you can use OmniFocus to make sure that you're looking at these lists as regularly as you need to, and just kind of dispelling some of the misunderstandings about what a someday maybe list is and delving into that that term. That's a term that, uh, that David Allen coined, and it's one that he talks about in the, the Getting Things Done book. So if you haven't read the Getting Things Done, definitely recommend giving that a read and that'll um, help to make this even more meaningful. Uh, so that's taking place uh, Wednesday, April 11th, and that'll be from 11 a.m. to noon Pacific time. Uh, if you are uh, finding that you're not able to attend these live sessions because of where you live for the day of the week and time zone and all those things, uh, definitely let me know and I'm definitely open to um, to scheduling some more and playing with the times a little bit. 
Uh, there's also two uh, Learn Omni Focus office hours scheduled for March. Uh, so there's one on March 14th from 12 to 1 Pacific, and then one on March 21st from 4 to 5 Pacific. And hopefully that'll accommodate everyone. Again, if you're finding these sometimes don't work for you, then uh, definitely let me know. Um, so you can register in these and read more about them by going to learnomnifocus.com forward slash live. And all of these are open to um, active Learn Omni Focus members. So if you're a, a member, you can come to any of these live sessions. Uh, if you're interested in the private coaching and consulting, you can also go to learnomnifocus.com forward slash private. All right. Well, without uh, further ado, um, I'm very happy to introduce Coulter Reed uh, to Learn Omni Focus. And um, He's a software developer, so he has, in his words, he transforms brilliant ideas into beautiful software. Um, and he's also a very avid blogger at coulterreed.com. And uh, he talks a lot about OmniFocus and some other tools, Evernote, um, and gets a lot of coverage on there as well. And one thing I really like about Coulter's blog is it isn't just about the technology, it's about looking at the bigger picture and and uh, productivity principles and um, just getting getting clarity in terms of where you're going and goals and so forth. So it's a really, really nice bridge between the the sort of evergreen productivity practices and uh, and apps like OmniFocus. As Tim said, yeah, I am Coulter Reed. Um, I've been blogging for about five years now at uh, coulterreed.com. Uh, March, will be, uh, sometime in March will be my, uh, my fifth anniversary. I haven't check the date of that yet just because I don't want to be intimidated and, and make a big thing out of it. Um, uh, somewhere around here, I'm going to be reaching 250 posts. I also don't know where that is. So if someone has been counting, then 250 is probably going to come and go and it's just going to be uh, just any other post. So um, let's see, my productivity backstory uh, began with a game of catch with my father. Um, I don't remember exactly how old I was. Judging from the house that we lived in, it was sometime between kindergarten and fourth grade. My father was very busy at the time, and he had this, this book that he wrote down all of his important things that he had to do in. And I, I, there was one day I, I was pestering him to you know, just go out and play catch with me. You know, come on, Dad, you're, you know, why are you, you're always so busy. And he told me, well, I don't have time right now. But I'll tell you what, and he flipped a couple pages uh, in, in, in this book and he pointed to the number 10 on the page and said, how about Saturday at 10 o'clock, we'll play catch. And I was so excited because I got written down in dad's big book of important things. I was so excited. And you know, not only did we have a great time playing catch uh, after that, um, but I, I started to want a big book where I could write all of my important things down. And my father kept saying, no, no, you're too young. You don't need it yet. Well, we finally, agree we finally came to an agreement that when I started seventh grade, I'd be going into junior high, then I would be old enough that I could get my very own Franklin planner. And this became, this started kind of a family ritual. My parents both had them at that point. I got one when I started junior high. Each of my sisters got one when, when they started junior high. And it, it was a fun ritual. And we, we'd get together once a week, um, usually on Sunday evenings. And we'd sit down and we would plan together as a family for the week. We'd all get our Franklin planners out. And it was, it was lots of fun. Uh, this is my Franklin planner. Um, the date on it is Wednesday, May 12th, 2010. Um, as far as I can tell, this is the last day that I actually used it. Uh, I held on to it kicking and screaming as I got dragged into the digital age. And uh, when, the, when, when the iPad was released, that was when I finally kind of made the jump and uh, left it behind. And I'm, I'm now largely digital, although on the heaviest and most busy days, I'll still grab a three by five card and just track what I need to do uh, on that. Paper is incredibly powerful. It's incredibly flexible. It can do exactly what you need it to do. Uh, so I do believe in top down planning. Um, this is the approach where, uh, where you start, at, you start at the very high levels. You, you start with, with your core values. Uh, the things that are the most important to you. This is very personal. Your core values are not going to be the same as anybody else's. There'll be overlap, but 
what is important to you? And this sits at the top of the mountain and, and like melting snow, it, it breathes life into the rest of the mountain and into everything else that you do. Because from our values, we start to draw a mission in life. And this is an expression of, of the difference that we want to make, the impact that we want to have. You know, everything that we do, what are we, try, what are we doing it for? What are we trying to accomplish? And as we start to notice broad themes in the things that we do, we start to, to coalesce these ideas around roles, uh, the different roles that we have in life. You're probably familiar with those. Like I'm a father, I'm, um, I'm an employee, I'm a husband. Um, and this is where we start getting into the, in shifting from the strategic thinking into the, the tactical thinking. And okay, what am I going to, you know, there, we switch from what do I want to do with my life to what am I going to do today? And the roles is where, kind of where we start to make this transition. Uh, within each role, usually within a role, we start to set goals. A goal is a change that we want to make happen something that we want to see different about our life, about the world around us. It's a change that we want to make happen. And then the actions that we take are the steps uh, that, we, that we take in order to make those goals happen so that we can, uh, so we can live our roles and execute our mission and just try to make the world a better place around us. I think that this is a better approach because it keeps you focused on, on what's important to you and what your priorities are. And when, 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 when GTD came out, I had a hard time with it for, for a long time. Um, I had a hard time accepting it because it seemed like you were always just spending your time dealing with the gravel that other people were sending at you and dealing with other people's priorities rather than staying focused on your own priorities. Um, I've since learned that you know, there, there's a place for it. Uh, it, it is a fantastic approach, fantastic system for dealing with with all of the distractions and the many inputs um, that we have coming into our lives, all of the things that will pull us away from that focused attention on the things that are most important to us. So since I've gone digital, it's really had me rethink what makes a good trusted system. I've stopped using the word planner so much now that, left, now that I've left my Franklin planner behind. Um, and the, the phrase I use now is a trusted system. Um, I got this phrase from Hiram W. Smith. He's the founder of uh, Franklin Quest. Uh, so he knows a thing or two about how a Franklin planner works and how it fits into to your life and a good planning system. And a, a good trusted system, there are a couple things about it. Um, for one thing, it doesn't have to be all digital. It can be all digital. It can be purely paper-based. Most people find a balance between the two uh, where, where they're using technology and paper together. And it, it can become very, very seamless. There may be some, data, some duplication of entry. That's not always a bad thing. But they develop a system of applications that work together so that they can get the most uh, get the most out of their planning and productivity. The principle that I like to look for here is the information you need when you need it, wherever you are. So I might be sitting in my, at, my, at my iMac where I've got kind of everything available. Uh, I might be out running errands and all I've got is my phone. And I like, to, I like to be able to have everything that I need with me wherever I am. Now, that doesn't mean I want to, be, want to have to look at everything. Uh, something else that, we, that is that we look for is is progressive disclosure where we can focus in on just the things that we need um, our attention on right now like when i'm sitting down for the week to plan i might, I might want to review my goals and so okay i want to see all of my goals that i'm working on what's the status of them if i'm out running errands i don't care about the goals i'm very tactical at that point so i want to see just like okay where do i need to stop what do i need to pick up um, and so I like having that flexibility to kind of look at things from a different perspective and focus in on just the things that are relevant to me right then. There are five kinds of information that your trusted system should be able to handle. Uh, when you ask someone about productivity and a, you know, a planner, uh, what apps they use, kind of the first thing they go to is tasks. Uh, this is the obvious one. Uh, the things that we need to accomplish 
are the things that are, you know is where we probably have have most of our attention. So that's fair. If you ask people a little bit, press um, you know push on a little bit, they'll usually pr- quickly realize that oh yeah, a planning system needs to also cover you know, where you need to be, the appointments that you have. Uh, this is time that you've scheduled with yourself. It also represents external commitments uh, where you have agreed to be someplace and you know, take, you know, and share your time with somebody else. The third is what you've done. Okay. A good trusted system lets you look forward and plan, but it also lets you keep a record of, of where you've been and what you've accomplished. Um, this is how you tell the difference between, yes, I paid that bill and I crossed it off versus I never wrote down that I needed to do that bill in the first place. Either way, it's not there looking forward, but it's nice to be able to look back and confirm that, oh, yes, I did pay that bill. I paid it last Thursday. It's done. It's sorted. I don't have to spend any more brain power thinking about it. Fourth kind of information is who you know. Uh, we do not live in a vacuum. If we are going to be productive, if we are going to change the world, this requires working with other people. And so your trusted system needs to be, needs to be able to track the people that you know so that when you need to reach out and make contact with somebody else, you know how to reach them. Now, for a long time, I thought that there were, uh, that there were just these four uh, types of, of information. But lately, I've been starting to think that there really is a fifth kind of information. This isn't a fully baked idea yet, but I'm, I'm confident in it enough that I'm, I'm, I'm going to start to go with this. And because time is money, and you can, there, you can trade one for the other, uh, in a couple different ways. And so you really need to be able to track what you spend or uh, what, what you can spend. And these are the five kinds of information that your trusted system needs to be able to handle. And so for today, we're going to focus in on OmniFocus. It is a fantastic app. Um, I've tried probably all of the uh, the popular task management apps that are available, you know, at least for the Mac. Um, tried a number of the not so popular ones. And I spent a lot of time trying to find an app that would replicate the, the cohesive and unified experience that I had with the Franklin Planner, where I had all of the different type, kinds of information in one place. And kind of a, a, a breakthrough watershed moment for me was when I realized a couple of years ago that that was the wrong approach. Instead, the better thing to do is to find each application that does, you know, it may just do one thing, but if it does it really well and it can integrate with others, then it deserves a place in my trusted system because then, then it can do what it's strong at. And if it's a little bit weak in one area, another application can step in and two are stronger together. I've been using OmniFocus since before it was OmniFocus. Um, I used Kinkless GTD for a while. Um, and then I was a beta tester for the original OmniFocus release. And uh, originally, I think I paid 16 bucks to get a full-blown copy of OmniFocus because uh, I was a student at that point, so I had a student discount. I was an OmniFocus or an Omni Outliner user. Um, I was a beta tester, and I think there was one more discount that I managed to stack on top of that. So I paid 16 bucks for OmniFocus. It's been a little bit more since then because of upgrades and buying it for the iPhone and then the iPad. But 16 bucks is the figure that sticks in my mind. So it's a fantastic value for 16 bucks. Um, <sighs> one of the things that keeps bringing me back to OmniFocus is its fantastic support for Apple Script. Apple Script is customer loyalty. I have got so many things that are scripted and integrated with other apps and automated through Apple Script that every time I start trying to evaluate another app, one of the first things I start looking at is, okay, how can I do these same integrations? And they're just not as good at it. And so I keep coming back to OmniFocus. It really is the best. I love the the integrations that it has because it is one of the one of the top and most popular apps out there. A lot of other apps um, expressly have integrations with it. This is from uh, Spark, and I can select information from an email that I get, and with just a keystroke, it brings up a custom dialogue that is specific to OmniFocus, so I can 
create a task, turn that email into what it is, and get it out of my inbox. I love the quick capture uh, uh, window that wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, I think of something I need to do, one keystroke, type it out, you know, hit enter, and OmniFocus will remember it, and I'm, I'm free to go back to, to whatever I was doing. I don't have to try to keep that task alive in the back of my mind, which is very distracting. OmniFocus is every place that I need it to be. Uh, it, it, it scales all the way from the Mac down to the watch. It is surprisingly useful to have OmniFocus on your wrist. I was a little skeptical of it, uh, but now that I've tried it out and do it, it's, it's great. It's great when running errands. It's great to be able to just capture stuff without having to pull something else out of my pocket. Um, OmniFocus on the iPad is my favorite way to do a weekly review and catch up on you know, the status of all my projects. Uh, just curl up on the couch with a warm drink and uh, go through the review mode. Hey, uh, this is OmniFocus. Uh, this is my today view. This is not the ubiquitous flagged or do soon view that, uh, that everybody does. And I think several of us are, are hoping will be built into OmniFocus 3. Um, this is tasks that I have specifically scheduled for today. And we'll get more into that in a, in a few minutes. So this is, yeah, this is where I spend most of my time executing. Um, the, three, the three flag tasks that you see at the top of the screen, those are my big rocks for the day, the big three. I try to keep it to just three. Sometimes, some days I'll only be able, I'll only come up with two, uh, sometimes just one. Some days I will come up with like, I think I had seven at one point last week, but they were, I knew they were all small things I'd be able to knock out really quick. Um, but I try to keep the, the big three uh, to just that, just three things that if I get nothing else done, if I can get these three tasks done, I will have had a good day. Yeah, putting a post on a Twitter on the Twitter profile, and it's arguable about how big of a rock that is, but it's time sensitive. So, <sighs> okay, daily planning. This is where I'm looking at the tasks that I have selected for today. Stuff I've previously nominated for. Well, maybe I should do this tomorrow, and stuff that I've selected that I should be doing this week. Uh, my daily review process, I start at the top and just work down. Um, I, I plan for the day in the evening before I go to bed. And as far as my, my evening ritual, I will, uh, at that point, most of the stuff for today has hopefully been, been checked off and isn't, and that's looking pretty sparse. Anything that is still left there, I need to make a conscious decision. Does it roll over till tomorrow? Is this something that I still need to do? Is this something that I need to defer until a later date because you know maybe tomorrow is not going to be a good day for it? Or is this something that I need to just drop completely now? Then I'll look at the things I previously nominated for tomorrow and, and decide whether they, they really get to come to the today list or if they're going to still going to be, well, I'll get to it soon. So it's going to stay on tomorrow. And then I'll also do a pass over this week to uh, just to see what's coming up. And if I've still got room on today and tomorrow, pick a couple of those tasks to pull them forward so I can go ahead and knock those out. Weekly planning is a very similar process uh, where I look at, you know, for just this week, next week, and this month. And it's the same sort of workflow. I'll select the tasks from next week and pull them up to this week. I'll select tasks from this month and pull them up to next week or this week if I still have room. And so, and what this lets me do is this lets me put tasks yeah, out into the future. And as the, as the time gets closer, they start to bubble up to where they've got my attention and I can actually do something about it. I like having a goals. Uh, perspective where I can just where, where I can see just the goals that I'm working on. Uh, I I realized that I was going th that as I was doing my weekly reviews, I often wanted to be able to to see just my goals and the tasks that I had for those. And rather than going through and just looking through the projects list and selecting that and then focusing that, I was doing this often enough uh, that I decided to just automate it. And so now I have a perspective that is just for the goals so I can 
take a look at those and make sure that things are moving forward there. And also roles, the same thing. Um, I can focus on, I can take a look at the roles that I have and make sure that I'm doing something meaningful in all of the important areas of my life. I've got an agendas perspective. Uh, this is the thing, these are things that I need to follow up on somehow. Um, either it's something that I need to discuss with somebody, it's something that I've delegated to someone, or it's something that I'm just waiting. Um, that I'm just, uh, yeah, that I'm just waiting on. I need to wait for something to happen. Maybe I do need to follow up and ping something to you know, check to see if something's happened. But I don't want things to fall through the cracks. So that's that part of the review. Uh, projects is just the overall list of the pro is the overall list of the projects. Um, very top of the list is sharpen the saw. You can, you know, I'm showing my Franklin Covey roots here. Uh, these are the things that I am doing to get better at what I do, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, intellectual, spiritual. I, this is these are tasks and activities so that I can be the very best self that I can. Because the better I take care of myself, the better I can take care of other people. Uh, next is goals and then roles. Then the gravel, this is my miscellaneous, uh, where I just get where uh, the little things that come in that need to be taken care of, but don't really fit into someplace else. I do track them. Uh, everything goes in the list. Uh, everything goes into OmniFocus. But at the same time, I kind of want to remind myself that eh, it's gravel. These aren't big rocks. If I don't get to these, it's probably not going to be the end of the world. It's probably not going to ruin my day. The order here from, of sharpen the saw, then goals, then rolls, then gravel, um, then projects down here at the bottom, uh, that order is intentional. There are a couple different uh, views that I use, uh, like the today view, where I have things sorted by project. And by putting things in that order, that then in theory, I can bring up the today view and just go from top to bottom, knowing that I am working on the most important things in that order. So uh, the order of, of, of the roles or uh, the order of your projects is something that you can hack and play around with. It, do, it does convey meaning there. Um, I do currently have a someday maybe list in OmniFocus. Um, I am rethinking that, um, wondering if that's the best place to have it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the, the upcoming uh, session that uh, we'll be covering that. I'm very excited to see, uh, see your thoughts on that, Tim. So those are projects. Um, contexts. I spent a lot of time looking at the con you know looking and reevaluating the contexts that I use in OmniFocus. I think I've tried about every different approach that I've I've, I've come across and didn't really like any of them for for one reason or, no or another. And I finally realized that what what uh, what didn't sit well with me about it was that there was no way for me to take a task and say I am going to do this on this particular day. And this is something that a paper planner is really good at, but digital plan, uh, but digital task management apps really struggle with. There are three. There are three important dates uh, in the life cycle of any task. There's the due date. Uh, this is the deadline. If you don't have it done by then, then there will be some sort of negative consequence. And most applications have a due date. They've got that one. OmniFocus has the fairly unique ability to track the, the, the def, what they call the defer date. This is the availability date. Uh, for example, I need to, uh, every six months, I need to report to my insurance company uh, my odometer reading. And you know, I need to do this again in July, I think. And right now, there's nothing I can do about that. So that task is deferred until July. So it's going to be hidden from most of, uh, most of my lists. But there's a third date and that we need to think about, and this is the day that we're going to actually do something about the task. It's not the same as the defer date. It's not the same as the due date, hopefully. And this is something that, that OmniFocus wasn't able to, to handle that well. And so I, I sat down and went back to my, my workflows with the Franklin Planner 
and realized that the thing that, that I was missing from that was the ability to just flip forward to uh, to a specific day and say, yeah, I'm going to do this on this day, or I'm going to do this in July at some point, or I'm going to do this in the fourth quarter. And so I created a set of, of temporal contexts that kind of the idea behind it is that if I'm not going to be doing something until the fourth quarter, I don't need to assign it to my laptop or my phone or out running errands or to a specific agenda to talk with somebody because that's not relevant now. The thing that's relevant, the most important resource that I need is the fourth quarter. I need to wait for that time to come. Then once it's time comes, then I can schedule it, get it on, you know, and actually get it scheduled for, you know, for this month, for this week, for tomorrow, for today. And I'm going to actually do it on that day. Um, I've, been doing this for a year or two now. I love it. I think it's a very comfortable way to do it. Um, it's very natural for me coming from the, the Franklin background. Um, I know some people think it's, it's a bit strange. There's a lot of overhead. It, it really isn't. Um, I find it just to be very natural just as I'm planning, just move stuff up. One thing that does help with that is uh, at my iMac where I do the heavy planning, uh, I've got the extended wide keyboard that has the uh, the F16 through F19, and so I use Keyboard Maestro with those, or and sorry, um, with the the numeric keypad, and I'm just one keystroke away from scheduling stuff for today, tomorrow, this week, next week, this month, next month. Uh, so that does help a bit. And this is something that I'm going to be revisiting as soon as I can sink my teeth into OmniFocus 3 uh, with the new tagging system. Um, this will, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to revisit this, may even blow up the status quo, and, uh, and I can't wait to see how that works. Another perspective that I've found useful is what I've done. Um, just a quick way that I can check and look back and see everything that I have accomplished. Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes it can feel like, like we're just constantly busy, 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 but we don't have anything to show for it. And so it's nice to be able to look back and see everything that, that you have done. I am a firm believer in if you do something that you didn't record in OmniFocus, go ahead and put it into OmniFocus and then check it off. There's that bit of satisfaction. There's that dopamine hit. You feel good. And it also gives you a record that, yes, you did take care of this. Um, I also have a text expander macro that runs an Apple script that will grab um, everything that I've done today. So I can dump it into an Evernote note or uh, day one and record and have the record there. If I, some of the major, app, the major scripts that I use, um, one is this, create, uh, is this script to create a support note. OmniFocus has a notes field for tasks and for projects, but it only supports just plain text. I'd love it if, if it supported rich text and it were a little bit easier to make custom URLs. And that works for a very lightweight note. And for a lot of things, like especially when I'm getting into goals and, pro and longer projects, um, I want to have a more substantial note. Uh, and so this script will go, will go over to Evernote and create a support note there um, in the right notebook, in my planner notebook in Evernote, and link it back to, to the OmniFocus project, link the OmniFocus project to the Evernote note, uh, so I can go back and forth uh, between that very easily. Uh, let each let each app focus on its strengths and what it does well, and have them work together. I've got a number of uh, project templates that I use um, on a fairly regular basis. Um, I, if I'm creating the same, there there are a couple of things where I'm just creating the same task, the same project, over and over again. And so, like any good productivity enthusiast, I automated it. Um, so when I need to like get a birthday card for somebody or uh, schedule the task for a blog post. Well, there are, are specific steps that I go through every time. And so I have an Apple script. Um, I can trigger it through launch bar and just say, you know, uh, 
uh, that I need to buy a birthday card for uh, for Jack, and his birthday is on April 27th. And then I've already done the work ahead of time to say to figure out when I need to mail it, when I need to buy it, and just work it back. It drops all of that into Evernote as a uh, as a complex task, and it makes it very quick. Um, I even automate some of that. Um, took it one step further. I have a script that does some daily maintenance that runs every morning uh, around 6 a.m. Uh, it looks for a couple things, uh, like any task that has been deferred until that day, it will flag it. Just to, and so that in case I hadn't noticed it, it slipped under the radar somehow, it will kick that task up and flag it so that I will notice it a lot sooner and don't forget about it. Um, it also takes care of creating some of the, the weekly routine tasks. Uh, I Similarly, I've got a monthly maintenance task that runs on the 20th of the month, and it will schedule tasks for, you know, for the end of the month and the next month and, uh, and get everything ready for that. I prefer that approach to just doing, uh, for a lot of things, over a repeating task in OmniFocus, because this lets me get the date into the task. Uh, so, for example, if I go back to today, um, you know, pin February 27th post on Twitter profile, uh, right post for March 13th. I, there's no reason why either of those couldn't be implemented as just a regular repeating task in OmniFocus. But because it has the date in there, it, it's a little more clear about what it is that I'm doing. Um, the reason I, I started doing this years ago after I got confused about which pay rent task OmniFocus was showing me. And I accidentally checked it off for, you know, I accidentally checked off next month's pay rent task early and you know, missed paying rent. Um, so after that, I sat down and figured out, okay, how do I not make that mistake ever again? And so now I have, and so now I have specific, more specific tasks with the date in them. And that's a lot more uh, flexible and powerful to work with. Yeah. So one one question uh, I have up front is what what role do defer dates play in your system um, beyond using the context? Or? So I do I do use both defer dates and the the temporal contexts. Uh, they're kind of they're, they're complementary. There is a little bit of overlap between them. Um, the way I the, the way that I approach it is if a task just is not available until a certain point then it gets a defer date. If I can do the task at any time, and I just don't want to deal with it until next month or next quarter, then it's available. It doesn't have a defer date. But then it gets scheduled, but then I just put it in a temporal context for, you know, uh, well, for the, uh, in the appropriate place. Um, oh, okay, that makes sense. So you can distinguish between ones that you're planning to do in the future versus ones you can't do until the future, is that the... Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, that's pretty much yeah. it. So okay. is, is it a choice that I'm not doing it now or am I just not able to do anything about it now? Uh, this does also give me the ability to go in and view tasks by the defer date. Just like, so you know, again, just so I can make sure I haven't missed anything that I could be doing something about now. So I don't, I don't lose that, that bit of information. Um, yeah, and some questions. There's one around the Apple script. If you could elaborate on the, the mechanics of the Apple scripts, um, yeah, such as your Evernote script. So how does that how does that actually work in practice? What does it look like to create a new script or to reference an existing one, or create a new note and reference an existing one? Okay, um, sure. Let's 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 try this out. Um, let's see. Let's grab. Here, let's do this. So sometime later today, I need to send the screen recording to you. And okay, so here is a brand new Evernote note that you can see here, it is linked back to OmniFocus. I can click that and jump right back to send screen recording to Tim. And now here in the note, I have a URL that will take me into Evernote, I guess straight to that note. And the beautiful thing about this, is that, you know, this is an OmniFocus colon slash slash URL. This is an Evernote URL. So this is all cross-platform. If I'm on my phone, 
and I've got both Evernote and OmniFocus installed, which I do. They're the first apps that I, I, I install whenever I set up a new device. Um, this just works on any platform. It works on my Mac. Um, it works on my phone. It works on the iPad. I can go, I can just jump between them. And so, um, for example, like, um, okay, I don't know how big, how big this file is going to be, Tim. So uh, do you have a preferred way that I send this to you? Um, yeah, Dropbox, Google Drive. Just on uh, Dropbox. Yeah, okay. Find it. Here via yeah. Dropbox. All right. Yeah, this is kind of overkill for that. I mean, but I'll, I'll also do this for goals. Um, since I've got it up. And this becomes, in a sense, an enhanced notes field where you can... Yeah, yeah, because then I can stick... Yeah, because yeah, then I can stick whatever I want to in it. Um, here, so like, you know, for example, here's, you know, a note that I've got, you know, that's supporting one of the goals uh, that I've been working on. Yeah, so it, it, it's much more flexible. Uh, this one doesn't have, you know, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll grab an inspirational picture and drop it in there. Ever, I use Evernote to store big, heavy notes, things that are, yeah, or it's like here. You know, I know that when I go to post it, I'm going to need to go to this URL. So I have it create the note with the URL in the note, or I have it create the task with the URL in the note so I can just click and go straight to where I need to go. Okay, nice. And if you were to click create support note and there was already a note for that project or action, would that create a new note or, or would it right take Right now it will. Yep. Uh, right okay. But that's a great idea. I, I remember you mentioned that before and I just haven't had a chance to update that yet. But yes, uh, that's a brilliant idea so that then I don't have to think about uh, where to go. I just click on the button and if there's already a note, it goes to it. If there's not one, it'll make one to go to it. So yeah, I, okay. I, I think that's a brilliant op, uh, optimization for that workflow. Question about uh, automation on iOS and okay. how you're handling work on iOS um, specifically for automation. So I'm not doing much with automation on iOS. Right now, iOS is, I use more for executing. Because the three views that I use most on iOS are the today view, what I need to be looking at, uh, daily planning, half the time I'll go, I'll just grab my phone and, and select the things I'm going to be doing uh, from there. And, uh, and then the, the review on, on iPad. Um, I am looking forward to OmniFocus 3 with their built-in, uh, you know, their expanded uh, JavaScript support. Uh, and playing around with that and finding ways that I can you know, automate more things on the iOS side. Uh, right now, the automa the automation that I have is pretty much on the Mac side. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Yeah, and that'll, that'll be nice in OmniFocus 3, just having that cross-platform JavaScript yeah. support. So that's, uh, in the meantime, if you haven't played with automation, either on Mac or iOS, um, I find it's time well spent, especially if you're creating the same types of projects over again or doing the same... Same sorts of things over and over again. It can be oh, a bit is. of work to set up, but it's, yeah. It is. And I don't, I don't think it's even just about the time saving. It's also creating consistency. So you know you're going to be doing oh, yeah. the, the same steps. And, yeah, fewer mistakes. Yeah, yeah. You're building on my, you're building on sort of past, past knowledge and so forth. So I was just telling uh, Coulter yeah. when we were first getting going this morning that I've got a, a checklist I go through every time I do one of these live sessions. And I keep adding to it as... If there's anything that doesn't go as well as it could, that becomes another checklist item. You know, what could I have put in place to, to prepare for that? Uh, question, I have this as a question as well too, is how, how does that process work for assigning context? Um, so let's say you're setting up the today list for tomorrow. Do you manually do that? Is there some Apple script they use to help with that, those sorts of things? Uh, sure, so what I do, if, I, if, if I'm on the iMac where I've got the extended keyboard, um, so I will go to today, uh, go to the daily planning view and most of today is, is usually done by this point. I'll, I might have two or three tasks left and let's say that they're just going to be there for tomorrow. And then I want to grab these two tasks and actually do them today. Uh, I'm on a different computer, so I don't have this set up, but, um, I would press control one on the numeric keypad and that, um, kicks off a keyboard maestro macro, which runs an Apple script, which will tell OmniFocus to go, th to go through the selection and set the context of every selected task to today. 
And I've got the same thing set up for, you know, control two is tomorrow. So today and tomorrow are right next to each other. Go up to control four and five. That's this week and next week. Um, six and seven, or no, seven and eight are this month and next month. And those are the ones that are, that I'm, I do most of the scheduling to pull things to. Um, if I'm creating a new task for something, um, like, uh, let's say, do something in June. June project uh, with the family um, in June. You start just start typing it in uh, mm -hmm. as you're as you're creating a task, and the 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 completion takes care of it. Okay, and then at the the end of May, would you be going through the the June list or? Yep. yep. So then. Okay. Yep. So then at the end of the month, um, and this I haven't really optimized this yet. I would take a look at, okay, what did I say I was going to do this month that I haven't yet? Um, it's February 27th. I've taken care of everything. Yes. Um, and then I will take a look at next month. And now I see I haven't actually done everything because I know I've got stuff for next month. So how many focus just isn't showing me things. Okay. Live TV folks. Um, but yes, I would look at next month and next month, right, right now, next month is March. And so I would grab everything from March and move it into this month. Just grab, select all, drag and drop. And then I would grab everything from April, select all, drag it into this month, and then move April down so that April happens after March. Mm, all right. Okay. And so now, now April just became April of 2019 at this point. If you're familiar with the 43 folder system, it's – this is how that works. I'm wondering if your view view is set to show only available. That could be why things aren't showing up there. Uh, that could be. Yeah. Um, show available. Oh, yeah. Okay. Show that would do it, yeah. Remaining. There we go. Okay. okay. So, yeah, I could just grab all of these tasks. In fact, I'm, I'm going to, you know, it's only, what, today's what, March? Is, is it negative uh, first? We're almost into March. Yep. Um, we're all, it's almost March. Let's go ahead and do this. So, Okay, so top of the page here, next month, these tasks, yeah, at a glance, these all look good for March. So I'm going to drag those into this month. April now is going to be the new next month. So I'm going to grab those, drag them into next month, and April becomes, oops, April becomes April next year. So that's how that, that that's how the monthly review works. So it is important that you stay on top of it, but it doesn't look like it's really that much work either to do no, this once it's a month. Not. And, yeah. and really, if you're if, if you're if you're in the habit of doing a regular review, you're al you're already doing eighty percent of the work because you know just sitting down regularly and looking over everything because you're already doing something to kind of to tell yourself when you're going to do it, what you're going to do this week. You're already doing something. So going from zero to this, okay, yeah, it might look for a lot, but, but if, if you're going from what you're currently doing to this, I don't think there's much of a difference. It, it, it wasn't much of a, of a, it wasn't that big of a step for me. Uh, I noticed on your today, it looked like some of the items on today weren't available. Um, Correct. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah, so uh, these are in a complex project. Mm -hmm. where oh, okay. uh, just because I don't want to be overwhelmed by, oh, I need to do like these six things. Right. It's, it's really one thing, but yeah, only the first one is available. Uh, once I check it off, then, you know, the next one becomes available. Um, again, again, it keeps, it, it helps with the overwhelm and not seeing everything at once. And this is, um, that reminds me, one of the things, uh, something else that I love about OmniFocus is its roots in Omni Outliner. There are other task manager apps out there, very popular ones, very shiny ones, uh, very good ones, that you can have a project and a project contains tasks and that's all the organization that you have. And it drives me nuts because there's some stuff that I have, you know, I might, there are multiple discrete steps that I need to take to accomplish a task but for whatever reason, I don't want to elevate it to the status of a project. And I know that, you know, I don't know, uh, Dave Allen probably heard me say that. That's why he moved to, to Europe. 
but um, I like the fact that, that in OmniFocus, I can just start drilling down and say, oh, okay, this task now has these steps underneath it. And, oh, this subtask now has these sub subtasks underneath. I try not to get carried away with that and use it sparingly. I try not to go, you know, most of the time I don't go one level deep unless I'm actively working on something and need to break it down. Um, if I can just look at, at a single task and know everything that I do that I need to do and I can sit down and do it, I'll leave, I'll leave it with just a single task. But if I know I'm going to have to, you know, go to different places to take care of something, like I need to go to the store to buy a card and then come home and sign it and then go drop it off in the mailbox. Um, I will track those as three separate subtasks under the task because sending somebody a birthday card, I don't know. I don't think that that's worthy of calling it a project. You know, by definition, it is. There, there are multiple tasks that you need to perform in order to see a successful outcome. But I like to think of it as a complex task that I can break down into multiple steps. If you, let's say you have things from, from March you're bringing into and March has arrived. So those would all have a context of this month or something. So is that, is it at that point where you would assign like location based contacts and people contacts? Uh, and Cause I noticed you have some it, of those down below. Yeah. Uh, when it gets to today, um, that's usually, that's usually when I'll do it. Sometimes when I pull stuff onto this week, I'll go ahead and like put stuff into the errands. Because that starts, because uh, like uh, errands that I'm running can be very opportunistic. Like, oh, I'm going out and running this one errand for one of my big rocks. But as long as I'm out, what else can I stop by and knock off uh, just to minimize the number of trips I have to make? It's one, really, it's once it becomes actionable, then I'll move it down to the other ones. Um, some, of the, <laughs> some of these contexts I, I have kind of deprecated and I'm not really using them anymore. But one of the scripts keeps recreating them. I haven't figured out which one it is. <laughs> yeah. Every time I think I've found one, I, it, it keeps coming back. So, um, yeah, some of them I don't really use anymore. Um, just cause it's like, you know, like the distinction now between having a phone and having my computer, that line is getting blurred more and more every year. I mean, I don't even have to have my phone to make a phone call now. I can just make that over the, over the computer. But yeah, I, I do still keep, you know, kind of the traditional resource, um, sort of context that, you know, that are in, you know, the, the more traditional GTD methodology. Uh, I do keep some of those where it makes sense. Um, but anything that I'm not currently doing anything about, they're in a temporal context so that, you know, they're, they're, they're timed out. Yeah. And this sounds like it'll, um, when the multiple tag support comes in OmniFocus 3, it'll sounds like this will be uh, really be able to enhance these workflows. So you could put errand on something, but also have it on your April Less for April yeah. temporal context. A <laughs> uh, question about okay. quarter context. Do you rename them or drop them after use or do they just go to the um, quarters? Yeah. They do get renamed. So I, I'll, and I'll, I'll just move it down. What, what I've been doing is I'll just move it down and then just do that. Change of the year. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I could script this and programmatically have it delete the one that I just emptied or, you know, even move everything from, Q3 into next quarter and then delete Q3 because it's empty now and create the next one. But yeah, I do it four times a year. So yeah, it would really have to take me a long time before I'm going to invest the time in automating that workflow. Right. Um, although on a, on a related note, uh, one thing I will point out, um, if I go back into my family role, I have these create tasks for, you know, all the cards I'm going to need to buy in the next quarter. And I left myself instructions in the notes field for everything I need to do. So I can go to, uh, remember the mail where I'm storing the list of all the birthdays. Um, and then I have, you know, instructions right here for, you know, for each event, use launch bar to run the create test for birthday script. This is the syntax in case I've forgotten uh, what it's looking for. This is the syntax to use. This is where it's going to put the tasks. And then create, you know, and then create the next task for you know a year from now. Yeah. So basically, a note to future self. Here's exactly. A reminder of how you do this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's you great. Know, a problem that I solved once. Let's never have to solve this problem again. And is OmniFocus exclusively for personal, or do you have some work-related things in there? Or you just keep those kind of siloed them. I am largely siloed. 
uh, yeah. just because my employer has strict rules about putting work information on servers that they don't control. And so I would not be able to put that, I, I wouldn't be able to put anything that meaningful in it. Uh, and so I just keep it all out of it. Um, I leave OmniFocus for personal stuff. I do have an employee uh, role because there are things that I do personally that overlap with work. Like, um, you know, like we're going on vacation in July. And so I need to request those days off. Mm, so I'll okay. put a you know, re, you know, request time off task in the employee role. But that's still a personal task, which touches on work. Okay. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, and I'm curious: does it is it actually advantageous to have those things siloed, or would you actually I prefer so. to have them blended together? Um, I've gone back and forth on that over the years. Uh, right now, my thinking is that I like having them siloed for the simple fact that when I'm home, it keeps work away from me. Mm. You know, I can't pull out. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can't accidentally see a bunch of stuff that I have to do in the office when I get back to the office. And I've just found I mean, it's, it's much more relaxing to have the stuff there. You know, work is there. It will be waiting for me when I get back to it. But right now I'm, I'm home. I'm taking care of my family. I'm taking care of personal projects. I'm working on you know, my goals. I'm working on stuff that is not work. And because our devices are so you know, ubiquitous now and, you know, we, we have this, this universal access to everything that we need. Uh, you know, more and more employers are letting employees bring their own devices in. You can bring your own laptop in and use it at work. You can, use, you can bring in an iPad or your, your iPhone and use that as your work device. And so now you have something that has everything on it. And, so, and, and that helps to blur that, that, that line between work and home. Uh, I just saw the statistic, but I forget what it is, but it's some absurd percentage of us check email for work before we get out of bed in the morning. And that's a, that's a ridiculous way to start your day. You're, 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 you're almost literally starting your day off on the wrong foot. And you're not even on your feet at, at that point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I couldn't resist it. <laughs> so when you're using OmniFocus, you're clear, you're in personal... Yeah. In a personal mode, and if you're using the mm -hmm. systems at work, you're clear you're in work mode, and there's no no real ambiguity in there. So, yeah, I can yeah. definitely see that, uh, that crossover. It's certainly quite different for me because my work and personal are not so cleanly divided. Uh, and I think that's sure. one, one case where it makes sense to have everything in there. Uh, if you do want to really sort of clean divide between the two, though. Yeah. Um, well, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. You work at home, and so there, there is a lot of flex between that, yeah. that work and home boundary. Uh, you know, if you have a strong boundary between, you know, between home and work, like you know, I am physically at home, now mm -hmm. I am physically in the office, right. then you know, it helps to reinforce that. I'm definitely intrigued by the temporal uh, context. Even that name sounds cool. So, sounds like some time, time travel. Um, I could see for myself definitely using them once multiple tags are available, just so I don't need to give up the it, context. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right now, it's kind of an all or nothing uh, because you have just the context field, and that's it. Uh, once somebody focus three comes, it should be a little more more flexible. And just on that point too, one thing I'm looking forward to using it for is having a tag like vacation to say this is everything I want to get done before vacation, even though I don't technically yeah. need to. Um, yeah, we'll be definitely covering a lot on uh, multiple tags as they as they emerge, and, and I'll be yeah. really curious to see how your system changes as uh, as these new features come into play. Yeah, and I'll I'll definitely be playing with it and you know trying it out and revisiting things that I've already covered in the past. Say, hey, this this workflow just got ten times better because OmniFocus supports tags now. I've this has been like my my. One of my top wishes for OmniFocus um, since the beginning is that, that they would support tags. So anyone who's interested in, in following along with what I do uh, with productivity in general, with personal growth, with OmniFocus specifically, uh, you can find me over at culturead.com. I try to post once a week on Tuesdays. So you can go over and check out, uh, you know, brand new posts just went live this morning. Uh, and I am on Twitter uh, at Coulter Uh But before we go, there's one more thing. One of the reasons why I started blogging was because I wanted, I realized that there are a lot of problems that, yeah, I, I know how, how to solve them, but just because I know how to solve them, that doesn't mean that everybody knows how, you know, and there, there are things that other people have solved 
that you know I learn, and then hey, here's this new solution, and I, I, I wanted to tell people about it. I got I got thinking one day about all the jobs that I've had, like ever, and realized that the ones I've enjoyed the most are the ones where I was actually working with people and helping them solve their problems. And so I started blogging. And blogs are, are nice bite-sized content. But if you're really having a problem with something and you want to go a little deeper, then grabbing a bunch of blog posts may not be the, best, the most helpful thing for you. And so one of my goals for this year is that I wanted to start working on some longer form content. And the first, uh, the first thing I, did, I, I decided to do for that was um, taking everything that I've learned about how to track and reach your goals using OmniFocus and Evernote together and, and put that together. And this was kind of the first goal that I had scheduled to work on in 2018. And, and Tim, when, when, when you approached me to ask me to, to, to speak to your audience today, I thought, you know, there's probably a number of people that'll be there, um, either with us live or watching the video later, who would also be interested in this. And so I, I rescheduled things a, a little bit, made sure that I had it done. So I am pleased to announce that for the first time, you can now get the Digital Gold Domination Guide, which will walk you through how to set up Evernote and OmniFocus so that they can each play to their strengths and help you keep your goals front and center for what you're working on. And as a thanks to you for tuning in, for tuning in today, you, you know, you've, you've given an hour of your precious time. And so to say thank you, I want to give each of you a free copy of this. So it's, this is fresh off the presses. I haven't even got, got anything set up to actually put this on sale yet. But you can get a copy right now for free. Just go to my website, coltreed.com slash OF live. Give me your email address and I will send you a link where you can download a copy of this absolutely free. So just as thanks for being here today. Okay, well, thank you very much, Coulter. That's uh, very generous. I'm definitely, uh, as many know, a big fan of uh, both OmniFocus and Evernote and really, uh, really yeah. looking forward to I look forward, reading the guide. I look forward to your, to your feedback. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And there's one more thing. Oh, one more thing, okay. <laughs> one more thing. If we can push the limits of live TV, um, I would like to do what is probably a first for Learn OmniFocus Live. Because this is kind of a book launch. I'm, I'm, I'm releasing this. And what fun is going to a book launch with the author if you don't get an, an autographed copy? How this is going to work, go to my website, coltoread.com slash OFLive, and put in your email address. I will send you a link to, uh, to the book where you can download it. When you get that email, hit reply. Tell me something that, that you thought was good today or... Uh, that I could have done better and ask for an autograph. And that's just, that, that's not about anything. That's just so that I know why you're emailing me, ask for an autograph and I will send you a copy of this cover, which I'm going to autograph. So thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. You, you have these goals and these dreams that you're working on as you go forward and, and, and do everything you can to be productive. Just one thing to keep in mind and that is stay focused. I am Coulter Reed. Thank you for being here today. It's been a pleasure. Well, thank you so much, Coulter. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate your time as well. And uh, for everyone who's here live, thanks thanks for being here with all the great questions. And for everyone who's watching the recording, I hope you find this uh, very valuable. And definitely uh, check out what Coulter has to offer. And I'm sure there's much more to come. And I'm definitely looking forward to that as well. Okay, well, thanks again. And I uh, hope to see you all again soon.